Hello everybody, welcome back to another reaction video. Today I'm going to be reacting to Red vs Blue Season 15, Episode 11. Uh, what is this one called? Belly of the Beast. So, last episode uh, was a pretty interesting one. We had um, Wash and Carolina kind of being confronted by Temple, who'd revealed himself as a villain, surprise, surprise. And uh, Wash and Carolina are now in armor lock in the basement, supposedly left for dead. So I'm interested to see where where we kind of go from here. What, how the if the Reds and Blues are going to find out? I reckon they probably won't, or some shit's going to happen, or they've already been kind of like recruited and brainwashed, kind of thing. To, to the blues and reds kind of side um, but yeah I don't really know it's, the last episode was a weird one and I think it, if you've seen my reaction to it you probably should go watch it um, I was definitely, it was definitely the episode that left me the most kind of on the fence about my feelings towards the season and so kind of seeing where they go from here in terms of plot and kind of quality has got me excited and nervous, I'd say. I think it's the best way to kind of put where I'm at. But either way, Belly of the Beast looks like a piss. Thumbnail is kind of like Sarge with a, the American flag behind him, obviously. Uh, blocked by the Reds and Blues, Dylan tries to seek answers on her own. Sarge finally gets a shot at stardom. Sure, okay, so I mean, something's going on with Dylan, then I guess see, they've either forced her out or whatever. Let's just watch it, shall we? I mean, don't really need to waste time thinking about what's going to happen when we can get straight into it. Alright, and in three, two, one. You know the story of Jonah? It does ring a bell. Do with the whale, Put right? that on the blacklist. Yeah. The Bible, actually. <laughs> Jonah was swallowed whole by a whale. Belly of the beast, huh? Sounds like this Bible ripped off aliens. <laughs> I feel a bit like Jonah right now. But this whale has secrets. I don't know about you, but I am sick of being sidelined. Oh, are we going to do some snooping around? <laughs> no, I'm going to do some snooping around. Aw, oh, come on. I can totally help. I don't know if you've noticed, but I am pretty good at randomly bumping into things that help move the plot forward. You have a more important job this time. I need you to distract someone while I have a look around. I think the blues and reds have <laughs> I mean, uh, I was just walking by. I didn't hear you say exactly what you said just now. See you later. Bye. I gotta go. Woo. I think you may be onto something. Oh, is Jack's gonna make him like a movie star or some shit? Or pretend to. Yeah, I reckon that's what we're going for. Hey there, Mr. Sarge. <laughs> Sarge, have you ever considered a life in show business? Ha! Huh? That's ridiculous. Show business is a young man's game. And I was an old man when your old man was a young man. Young man. Well, not young necessarily. Uh, some people character. do get into it late. At the later. <laughs> well, despite my chiseled frame and iconic eyebrows, I am a soldier, not a movie star. You know, you remind me of R. Lee Ermey. He was a Marine, a real one like you. He was consulting on Full Metal Jacket and was so good that Kubrick cast him in the actual film right then and there. Really? Ain't that a wing dinger? I happen to be writing a military drama myself. But if you're not interested, I can check with Serge. Apparently, he studied at Juilliard. <laughs> Both! Now, don't you go putting words in my mouth. I didn't say I wasn't interested. Now, what exactly did you say this movie is about? It's a military court drama about a drill sergeant who has to defend himself in court after an accident during a drill gets his whole squad killed. Sounds fantastic! I've long fantasized about Griff dying horribly <laughs> during routine training exercises. When can I see the script? Script? Of course! I, I mean, once you have the part, of course, of course, there's an audition first. It's like a train <laughs> test, you <laughs> know? Just train, like test. Audition test. Test. train test. You can see in front of the camera test. All right, all right, I'll give it a shot. Firstly, I always seen myself playing the 30 something CEO of some exciting internet startup. Yeah, I think that's gonna be a bit of a stretch. Why don't we stick to what you know? Lights, camera, 
device well then what is it i don't know but it most definitely shows that they're not being honest with us maybe they just don't trust the press i can't blame them there i'm not some reality tv <sighs> producer okay i promise i didn't leave that bounty hunter to you can we please bury the hatchet and just focus on what's important they haven't given me one single reason not to trust them dylan then explain why they're keeping us in the dark about what's going on they're not look they left me in charge of planning the campaign against the unsc that's a video game what? No, it's a tactic simulator. Look, advanced military stuff. That's a video game, Tucker. Huh. Ha that's ha Halo well, I guess that too. explains the microtransactions. They're distracting no, was, you. I'm Where are Carolina too. and Wash? I heard they've joined up with us. They're out getting some grub. She told you that? Dibble did. You're seriously going to tell me nothing about this place smells fishy to you? Of course it smells fishy. Figuratively, <laughs> Tucker. Figuratively fishy. Almost all the doors around here are locked. I can't find a single computer that's networked. If they were really being so open, why all the secrecy? I wouldn't want a bunch of random people running around my house either. They might steal shit or walk into my masturbatorium. <laughs> Ugh. What if it's more than that? What if there's stuff they don't want us to see? You know, I don't need your help. I just thought you should know. Temple's office. What about it? He has a network computer. I've seen it. Bingo. Let me know what you find, all right? Of course. Okay. Oh, they got ready? a green screen. So. Sarge, <laughs> did you choose a monologue? Of course I'm nervous. I mean, ready. I mean, of course I'm ready. <laughs> Alrighty then. I will get in position. Wonder what he meant by choose. Remember, Ritz? No bastard ever won a war by dying for his country. He won the war by making the blue bastard die for <laughs> his country. Now. Should we win today, the 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday, but as the day the world stood up in one voice and said, You may take our lives, oh. but you will <laughs> never take our truth. You also, want the truth? Said. You can't handle the truth. Second place, you the second night, third place, truth. martini. Shaken, not stirred. Just said like 600 lines. Good. That was great take. Uh, He's dead, Jim. You're a wizard, Harry. Feel lucky, punk. Say what again? Over the line. Hasta la vista, a great big bushy beard. This is my boomstick. <laughs> How am I doing? I think we're losing the thread. Dance of the Wolves, City Slickers, Predator, Laser Team 2. Those are just titles, Sarge. And I'm pretty sure you made that last one up. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, did I get the part? Why don't we try some improv? I have a better idea. Where's the reporter? In her corner, sir. Wrong. They're empty. You, Shutterbug. Tell me where she is. Have you gentlemen ever considered a life in <laughs> show business? Oh. Uh, I, I, I don't know, I swear. Oh, the little bouncy thing again. <laughs> Vic. Vic. Yeah. Hey, Vic. God damn it, Vic. 
Yo, 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 yo! V-I-C-K, what is up, Chica Mosfina? Quiet. I need help. Ho-ho! Well, your wish is my command, Dutorino. This genie is popping off that bottle and ready to roll. What you need? Access to this computer. Can you hack in? Dunzo! Wait, little reminder to you that you've got three little wishes before you've got to control alt delete me off the face of reality. That was the deal. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I hadn't forgotten. Yeah, and this is wish number, uh, uh, wish number. <laughs> Seems like I got a little, uh, dap in the memory circuits, a little, uh, eraser in the cabeza, huh? Uh, this is wish number. Wish number two. Right. <laughs> this is wish number <sighs> dos. You promised, Doo Doo Dorito. I don't want to stand up my date to death. Force, We're taking the River force. Six to Disneyland. I'm doing shots with Anubis, dude. I'm playing Twister with the Reaper. Keep your voice down. Do you have a silent mode or something? <laughs> that works. <laughs> so <laughs> Knock it off. Are you in? Have you found anything? What is it? <laughs> it's me. What does that mean? Oh my god. Dylan! Oh no. Why am I not surprised? I think it's about time we had a little chat. Fuck. Oh, <laughs> what? It's even worse cliffhanger than the last one. I mean, the last one wasn't really a cliffhanger. That's a cliffhanger, though. And that's... Again, the episode leaves me going... What? What is going on? That was a good episode. That, that kind of last bit of the stuff with Dylan was actually pretty, pretty good. Um... Once again, I'm going to pause for two seconds and then I will return. All right, so um, that was a very interesting ending. The episode itself, pretty decent episode. There was nothing I hated about it, but I mean, most of it, especially the side stuff, was kind of just like comedy. I mean, and it was also just like his side kind of doing a movie audition. Bam. And that's like half the episode kind of thing. But the stuff with Dylan um, was pretty good. The first part, obviously, we get to see a bit of uh, Temple and Loco. She's kind of spying on them. Um, and it makes sense, um, kind of back to when we first got introduced to the Blues and Reds, it was kind of like Loco says, like, oh, Temple, he yells at me sometimes, whatever. And it seems like <laughs> when you compare it to kind of Churchill and the Caboose, Temple is actually crazy and mean, whereas Church is just kind of like a dick, you know. Whereas this is it's like a weird dynamic of they're both both Cabooses are getting shouted at by churches, but it's in a different kind of way, and I, I think that's quite interesting on seat. Um, I think that also kind of confirms that not all the Blues and Reds are in on it maybe or at least not like out for revenge kind of thing it seems as to me that seems like with loco kind of seems like he's a pawn in temple's plan as opposed to being like they're all kind of working together to do this it seems like he's kind of being manipulated slightly even though he does re he does know what's going on though so it's like he knows that he's building some sort of weapon i don't even know what is it the techno battle wars bit um, Temple was like, why couldn't you just build me a bomb instead? Kind of thing. So it's like, he must know that it's malicious. I assume if he's if he is being used. And he also had his, he got his gun out and he was like both of them were kind of looking for Dylan kind of thing. So it seems like yeah, I still don't know the level at which each one of the blues and reds kind of plays into the plan, but definitely Temple is the uh, the ringleader kind of thing. Um, I think now would be a good time to just say like the way they're kind of utilizing all of the tools in Halo 5 in terms of like they had that little can on the table and it rolled off and then it hit the thing. Like like a little it's a little thing, but it's something that something like that they probably wouldn't have been able to do. So simple in like in games kind of stuff because I think props and that sort of stuff to use that for comedy 
is something that hadn't really been as available in previous games. So it's nice to see that with that available, they are actually making use of that sort of stuff. Um, then we uh, we had we had Dylan trying to convince Tucker that something was wrong, and obviously he's still very much invested in the Blues and Reds, but it seems that he has some slight distrust, I guess, kind of telling Dylan, or at least a trust for Dylan as well, if uh, at most, kind of like telling her that Temple had the computer, and so even if he still kind of trusts in the Blues and Reds, he's got some trust for Dylan also, so it's like, who is he going to side with in the end? Um, and then, yeah, Dylan going to the computer. Obviously, we are revealed that she did have Vic this whole time. It seems like it's on a uh, kind of like, what do you say, three wish basis kind of thing. Like, you, I'll do these things for you and then you delete me. Um, but I don't think he could remember how many wishes he's already granted her. Had he granted her two or did he already granted her three? I think this would be the third one, wouldn't it? I'm not sure. Um, but either way, yeah, that kind of thing of her having Vic. They kind of didn't name drop him earlier as if like this was supposed to be a reveal but you'd kind of have to be a fool not to realise it or for it to end up being a misdirect but evidently it wasn't she does have Vic which I think is pretty cool um, I like the way it kind of they use it though is that he comes up on a little screen because I mean that's what it, Vic isn't that dude he's, he's the kind of the dude in the chair in the with the background in the pillar of autumn kind of scene is Vic and so they have to show the whole frame and I do like that and then he went to tech speak did the whole ASL thing that was pretty funny um but yeah the bit he says oh my god look what I found and then he said it's me I think didn't he I'm pretty sure that's what he said where is it let's go let's zoom through you're not going to believe this dude, oh my god. It's me. So, and then he shows the message from Church. Now, what that means, I have absolutely no idea. Well, I mean, I do have an idea. Pro probably nothing correct. It's like, is that him being weird? Is that him saying that Church is, that he's part of Church? Like, is Vic... A fragment, possibly, maybe. I don't know. That'd be that'd be interesting if Vic was like some fragment of the Alpha. Because I mean, Vic is voiced by Bernie, who voices Church. I mean, it's kind of like can't really meta game it in that sort of way, but it's a theory, and that gives it some ground. I mean, either way definitely is an interesting thing and it's nice to see if Vic kind of does play some more importance because he's a kind of it's a character that when you think about it is pretty big but is kind of just like swept under the rug in previous season I mean it was only really only really in like last season did they go out of their way to actually kind of say like look he is an AI yeah like we hinted at it and you'd kind of been known since like season five but if you didn't get it here he is an AI and he's malfunctioning right and so it's nice to see that they're kind of bringing that back if he is um, if he is part of the alpha I'm totally on board of it or church or whatever some form of relation to him I don't even know but I'm on board with it I think it's a pretty cool idea um, but yeah and then we have temple and is it who comes in? Temp is it just Temple and Surge that come in? Yeah, Temple and Surge. So that kind of leads me to believe that, at the very least, Surge is at the same sort of level as Temple in terms of revenge, I guess, or like motives. And maybe Bucky. But I mean, to be fair, Bucky's not really had that much screen time, considering how, in terms of like counterparts, Temple has kind of been. Tucker's counterpart as opposed to Bucky being Tucker's counterpart. We've ever, how many times have we been heard Bucky speak? Like three times or something stupid? It's like not much. He's not had much screen time really. Um, 
but yeah, so we're left on a cliffhanger, and I am excited to see where it goes. I think this has been a better episode. It was a shorter episode than last time. And to be fair, a lot of it, like I said, a lot of it is kind of, not filler, but kind of comedy with the stuff with Sarge. It's kind of just a distraction. But it's nice to see we're still kind of keeping those, the kind of comedy and the actual story stuff going, as opposed to doing like full-on plot episodes or full-on comedy episodes. This does seem like another build-up episode, though, admittedly, because I assume next episode is where shit's probably going to hit the fan, at least in terms of Dylan, and then, yeah, I don't know, I'm excited, if I could watch the next one right now, I would click it in a heartbeat, but uh, unfortunately I have to wait a week, as do you, as do we all. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this reaction video, be sure to leave a like and a comment as to what you'd like me to react to next, be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on my content, and so that you're notified when I release another reaction video. I've been Eproth, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.